This lecture covers the foundation skills necessary to create and construct a complex fold using Adobe InDesign. The learning objectives we will follow include using facing pages and non-facing pages and identifying reasons to use each option, telling the difference between reader spreads and printer spreads, understanding the difference between flat size and finish size, answering the questions, what defines a complex fold? What is page shuffling? How is page shuffling used to create complex folds? We will also identify the steps necessary for turning page shuffling on and off. We will identify page sequencing, which will allow us to put the pages in the correct order for a complex fold. And then we'll practice moving pages in a layout. Last, we'll wrap up the lecture by discussing some additional considerations that you may want to take into consideration as you are designing for a complex fold. Setting up a multi-page document starts with identifying the specifications of the book or item you are creating. This can include the flat size versus the finish size, if they are different, bleeds, and margin widths. It also requires users to identify the item they are creating as requiring facing pages or not. Facing pages are the right and left hand side pages of a book, also known as a spread. A crossover occurs when an image crosses over from the left hand page to a right hand page on the same spread. InDesign's two page layout options are facing pages, or making something requiring spreads, and non-facing pages. Using non-facing pages is like creating a Microsoft Word document with a single column of pages. It is still used to create a multi-page document layout, but the manner in which the pages are presented will never result in a spread. It is important to remember this because as a designer, we take everything about the user experience into consideration, including how the sequencing of pages interact. And so you can see on the right hand side here, the left example is facing pages. You have a right and a left hand side page. And the example on the right is a non-facing pages layout, which is like a column of pages. Neither is right or wrong, but they are right or wrong depending on what your intentions are with your project. Facing pages are turned on and off via the new document dialog box when creating a new document. If you change your mind and need to switch from facing pages to non-facing pages or vice versa, you can do so via the document setup dialog box, which is accessed via the file, menu, and then document setup. You can see from my screenshots on the slide that if you choose file and then new, you will get the new document dialog box and you will have the option to turn facing pages on or off. In this example, facing pages would be turned on. If you decide that's not what you want, you can always go back and choose file, document setup, which will open the document setup dialog box and you can adjust the facing pages options here as well and you can see that I've unselected or unchecked the facing pages option. Designers should also consider final output capabilities and limitations when choosing to use facing pages or non-facing pages. Each option creates a unique set of constraints on an artist's choices regarding artwork, layout design, and binding options. For example, Binding methods that create a spine use spreads in the final product. Designing a booklet with right and left hand pages using non-facing pages prevents designers from making choices about how artwork interacts across spreads. You can see on the examples on this slide that these books are using spreads. The gentleman on the left hand side has a left hand side page and a right hand side page, but they do not have crossovers. The designer would make a decision about how those pages would interact. There are additional examples on the next images that will appear. And you can see that designers are working together and they are placing pages side by side to see how those pages interact. Another example is on the right hand side here. Although this image does not cross over, they are two separate images, the designer still made the decision about which images to put on the right and left hand side page. So when someone experiences their design, they experience the images together on the right and the left hand side of the spread.